Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. It's such a good one, eh? I mean, they're all good. The yeah. Feels pretty good. Oh, look, I got the. We have our, we have our side, side uh, thing. Uh, twinsies. Good. <laughs> yeah. How was your con? It's been incredible. I didn't get to go last year. I went to a family wedding that had a fist fight at it, which was kind of amazing. Very well but um, <laughs> this is kind of like that, minus the fist fight so far. Um, I love Comic Con so much. It's really the reward for all your hard work, right? And to see the people face to face, oh, I love this so much. Who um, enjoy the show, it just reinforces all why you've worked so hard at 3 a.m. Um, Remind me that I said that. If we go again, I'll be like, oh. I have the audio. Okay, good. Thank you. Any uh, funny comments or fans? Um, oh, a million. We had an, we had our first signing yesterday, and there was a couple that was coming through the lineup, and the first girl had a poster, and the second girl had a tiny box that we were all signing. We're like, what is this? And she's like, it's a present for her. So Mel and I were at the very end, and then we were like, is it? But it, but it but you, like, you don't want to. So she's like, okay, you've all signed it. She proposed to her girlfriend. She got down on one knee and proposed. I like bald. I'm very tired. Um, but it, and the girlfriend was super surprised. It was so amazing. So that was pretty unique. Um, I mean, really, what's a more romantic place on earth than the White Owner Herb signing uh, line, though? But it was pretty incredible. Yeah, people we in the back of the line too. Exactly. We and um, we did something really fun too. We're really known for our live tweets on the show yeah. every Friday night. We all got together. So there was a group of fans who were meeting at a hotel tell the live tweet so all the cast and I showed up and we live tweeted with them yeah. so that Amazing. was pretty fun so it's just, it was really fun though we love them we're not very cool we uh, kind of wear our hearts on our sleeves we really love our fandom and we wouldn't be here without that fandom so so going back to this where you mentioned this fight at this wedding, how does things kind of like in real life with family dynamics kind of inform anything on the show, if at all? Because I mean, I know and Waverly are very, very, very tight and yeah. they're very supportive of each other, but sometimes they do um, fight as sisters do. Yeah. Like, so is there sometimes, you know, things that might have happened with somebody family-wise that you know that you kind of put that spin on or do you keep it completely out or? Um, I mean, it's hard Personal stuff always influences your work, right? The truth is I actually don't have a sister. I have a brother, but I always wanted a sister. Um, and when they brought me the comic book, I have a little girl. I had just watched Frozen like 75,000 times. Um, honestly, if I hear that song one more time, I'm going to get like PS PTSD in a rush. But um, I was really struck and moved by the fact that the real romance in that movie is the sisters, right? They kind of save each other. So I was quite intrigued by the idea of sisters in the comic book. And what I like the best is the idea that Waverly really wants to be the chosen one, and Winona wants to be Waverly and be liked by everybody and would rather die than be the chosen one. So I think it's interesting that they love each other, but they also both have what the other wants, so to speak. Um, and also, they've been apart for years. I mean, they don't know each other. So it's just so rich. Like, I could tell that story for 20 years, right? I think sister stories don't get enough play. Um, and you know, genre is the home of like building your own family, right? I think we've seen that time and time again from Buffy to Purple Star the idea that like you can't choose your family but you can build a family of your own and we certainly strive to do that on the show with this you know with Doc Holliday a dragon you know an amazing gay cop and uh, what have you your typical family so to speak but uh, yeah what kind of you have before you started writing the show and um, yeah, tons. I mean, everything goes back to Buffy for me a little bit, just as far as like, just I just think it was so incredible what Joss and Co were able to do at that time. And you know what else really stays with me from that show is like we are a small underdog Canadian show. We probably have like Game of Thrones hat budget, like you know, like for the whole show. <laughs> but like Buffy, and you're like there are no hats, and I'm like that's my point. Um, <laughs> but like Buffy, even now you watch it and like you know you can see the zipper of the demon's back but the heart and the emotions and the relationship the characters are so true and so earned that like the audience doesn't care and when I get nervous about special effects or stuff like that I'm like no if it still comes back to like what's honest and real and moving that's kind of really important so yeah I'll 
back during season one, I, I, I interviewed you. I was from Fangirlish. I interviewed you, and you were talking love about... Oh, uh, thank you. Unless you're gone, then I hate... No, I'm just kidding. I love you. No, no, I'm just um, And you mentioned that Winona felt like your ugly baby that you oh, just absolutely... <laughs> How do you feel about your ugly baby now being in season two, oh. being in Comic-Con, like... Amazing. Like, the truth is, Winona is a really hard sell, right? Like, it's a crazy title. It's kind of weird. Wyatt Earp is, like, the most iconic American legend ever, but it's, like, a Canadian show. Like, and we were really running around the woods first season in the middle of Alberta. We were like, is there even film in the camera? Like, we're doing all these skits. It was just such a crazy show. I was really proud of it, but I did think this definitely has a specific tone. I don't know if anyone's going to watch it. This has been, I'm tired enough, I will cry. This has been beyond my wildest dreams. Just the passion of the fan base, um, how they've adopted it and they get it. And they understand what we're trying to do and what we stand for. Um, it's a dream come true. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned Buffy being a big influence. Uh, I definitely noticed a lot of season two, like the villains and stuff, that oh, yeah. very Buffy-esque. Um, what goes into like creating those types, like the, the the widows and the spiders and all that stuff? Like, do you, right. do you look at old stuff like Buffy and try to get a inspiration? You know what? Yes, I think less Buffy because I really do. I'm so honest about my love of Buffy. I really try not to be. I try to be. Um, respectfully imitative versus derivative, right? Um, you can tell me later if I succeeded or didn't. It's honestly budget. Like, what can you do on the budget? So anything humanoid is just better than, like, the Demigorgon from Stranger Things, right? That would be, again, our whole budget. So you end up using a lot of the same tropes. And also, like, a good scary spider story is just a good horror movie material, right? Everybody hates spiders. Not everybody, not everybody. But, like, it's a good, cheap, fun creature of the week, so to speak. Um, the Widows, we definitely built backwards because they're going somewhere and they're very important characters so um, so any um, any homage is just that but I think a lot of it is just common um, genre tropes and a lot of that comes from those comics too like really Winona is a monster squad hunter so every type of creature appears in the comics werewolves, vampires, zombies but with a twist so thank you so much guys thank Enjoy you the cast, okay? bye bye